welcome back to the channel uh, as promised the uh, video for the repair of this HP uh, 3585B spectrum analyzer as you can see here we've got two uh, HP 35B spectrum analyzers uh, this came in the mail today it's going to be a parts donor for this one I haven't uh, aside from unpacking it I haven't opened uh, this analyzer at all so we're going to do that together on camera and we'll see uh, what's inside uh, it was sold as non-working uh, seller listed uh, some of the problems that he had with it uh, he says there's a short on the uh, positive 15 volt rail he says there's a problem with the a1 uh, which i think is the um which is the front end uh, section there's a short somewhere on that portion he said there's a problem with the A24 board. Uh, he said that um, uh, a couple, uh, and uh, I think he said when they got the display uh, to come up, it, it had a message saying it was uh, uncalibrated or untuned, uh, something to that effect. Um, so it's strictly sold as parts, uh, which is fine. I don't, uh, I don't intend on trying to make this one work. I bought it just for parts. Uh, so it should have lots of parts to keep uh, this one running here. So we'll open that one up in a minute and take a look. Uh, like I said, other than unpacking it, I haven't actually look in, looked inside it yet to see what is there. Hopefully uh, everything is, is there. Um, but we'll find out. And we'll go into some more detail about what uh, exactly the problem is with this spectrum analyzer. Uh, we'll look at the documents for the troubleshooting and I'll explain uh, to you where um, where I've determined the fault to be. Uh, as you know from my previous video where I uh, talked about this uh, this Tektronix vector scope, uh, other than the display not working on the CRT, everything else appears to be working fine. So um, the problem should be isolated to the display portion again for this uh, spectrum analyzer but uh, we'll take a look at the documents and we will look at um, this one here first I'm gonna take the camera up here off the tripod and we'll have a closer look at the condition here uh, it arrived and it was packed pretty well I mean for what it is it's an 80 pound uh, instrument it's, it's very heavy and bulky uh, the seller did have it packed in um, expanding foam packaging uh, with some in a in a um, he had the whole thing in a bag so this foam wouldn't get in the instrument and then the foam uh, around it uh, so I could say you know it uh, doesn't appear to have any additional damage than what how it was listed before uh, looking at uh, some of these BNC's uh, one good thing is if I decide to uh, replace the BNC here I've got a replacement now uh, but I think I'll probably just leave that the way it is for uh, the trouble that's involved with getting getting that um, front end assembly out all right let's take a look at the uh, spectrum analyzer up close here all right uh, let's see so I've got it on this rolling cart uh, so that I can sort of spin it around here and it looks uh, you know, it's it's pretty. It's kind of dirty. With some grime and stuff on it. Um, the B and C's look uh, a little bit, um, little little nicks there, but nothing. It's still completely usable. This one looks like it's uh, been bent a little bit there. And um, let's see. This is the tracking generator out that's uh, bent, and of course the amplitude control for the uh, tracking generator is broken off. And I think that uh, it was also broken on this one. I'll have to go back and uh, look at the videos there. But I think I think one of these was broken off. I can't remember if it was the tracking generator knob or which one, but anyway. So yeah, no surprise there. Uh, the other knob, this one looks like it's missing its end cap. Uh, these other ones look pretty good. Uh, so we'll take those off to uh, just save them. All right, and I'll turn around to the backside here. We'll have a look so we're missing the connector that goes between the uh oven out and the reference in so that connector is missing um 
other than that, these BNCs look like they're in pretty good shape. It's in kind of dirty. Uh, the grill, fan grill on here is pretty dirty and it's bent up. And it looks like uh, it's missing the uh, retaining screws there. And other than that, it uh, looks pretty good. Let's see, the serial number on this one is uh, 2933A630. So I'm pretty sure that my analyzer was a 2933 series, so that's good. Uh, we'll have to look and see what the serial number is to see how close they're related to um, my, other, my uh, working one. Let's take a look at that. So this is the back side of my working or my good analyzer, and it's a uh, 2933 a622 622 a00622 so that's a 00622 and this one is a06 so they're only these analyzers are only uh eight units eight units apart uh, if that's a uh sequential build number which I, I think it is so that's kind of interesting that uh these analyzers are that cr closely related but uh anyways let's do uh what i know let's do whatever i know everyone wants to do now and we'll take the covers off and see what's inside this parts unit all right we're going to do this live take this cover off and have a look this will be the uh, top portion of the Spectrum Analyzer. All right, here we go. the top portion of the spectrum analyzer here let's take a look all right um so it looks like all right here's the a24 board which is right here that's the one that the seller said there was a problem with uh, but it looks like it's all still connected together um these have got uh, markings on them so I don't know if those are factory or if that's something that somebody's done uh, later on but uh, anyway if that's something that somebody's been done um, in like a uh, troubleshooting uh, you know method there let's see we're missing some screws uh, looks like this is the uh, tracking generator I believe and it looks like screws have been taken out here so that's definitely been worked on this feels yeah that's loose so that's been out uh let's see i don't see any other missing screws down here there's one right there that's missing so this thing's definitely been into uh all the power supply boards uh look like they're uh present and trying to remember one of these boards isn't populated on my spectrum analyzer I, but i can't remember which one it is but anyway all those boards are there uh let's see there's the uh there's the processor board right there and have a look at it so it's got the uh the newer uh it's got the newer style processor in it i think the um the 85 80 or 38 um or the um 35 a's had a different type of processor an older style processor it was big um uh like a custom hp processor had it has a big uh molded uh heat sink aluminum heat sink that uh, takes up the whole board uh in there but that one's got the newer uh that one's got the newer uh plastic pack processor in there 
I mean, I don't remember what the pro I don't remember what the chip number is, but uh, anyway, and it's probably a custom HP job anyway. So, all right, let's see. I've got uh, display boards and our XY board there. All right, let's flip it around and take a look at the backside. All right, here we go. Let's pop this off here. Okay. All right, let's see. Got our high voltage power supply. Oh, something written here. Let's see, negative 15 volt shorted to uh, GR, GR1, which I think is ground one. And this is disconnected there from the uh, first LO input, which goes right there. So that's disconnected. And let's see if we can see anything else here. At the bottom of the track and generator board. This is the bottom of the... Uh, this is disconnected too. So this is... Right here. Goes into there. That is the control. The digital control for the RF front end. So that's disconnected. So apparently we know that this is not working right. And I think I said positive 15. I must say, I must have meant to say negative 15 there. So clearly this is not working. That's all disconnected. That's disconnected. Someone's been in here trying to troubleshoot it and they must have given up or decided that it wasn't worth it to repair. So that's why we got it for parts. Uh, but this is where I'm interested in right here. Uh, under here is the high voltage power supply. And that is uh, where the problem lies with my uh, working spectrum analyzer. So let's take a look at the documents there. We'll talk about uh, what I figured out. So I was using this spectrum analyzer uh, the other day to work on uh, my long-term project, uh, which uh, we'll look at. We'll, we'll uh, discuss that in a later video. And what happened was, is I had the spectrum analyzer running. It'd been running for. Um, a little, a uh, few, a few hours, maybe, maybe an hour or two or so. And all of a sudden, um, the display, uh, sort of flickered and I, I could see the image on the display. It, it kind of blinked and then it all just sort of collapsed into the middle of the display, uh, there. And I think there was probably a beep or something from the, uh, spectrum analyzer that, uh, letting me know that something happened. Uh, but I, and then I had no display, of course. Everything else on the display looked normal. Everything was lit up and like it was should be going, but I had no display. So I turned the unit off, and of course I turned it back on uh, to see if it would do anything different, and it did not. It uh, started up just fine, uh, except for there was no display on the spectrum analyzer. So I knew that it was a problem, and I've been so, you know, through the... Uh, display issues with this before, so I kind of knew uh, where to go, where to start. Um, I opened uh, the uh, instrument cover up and took, uh, checked all the voltages. All the voltages, voltage rails were good. All the green uh, LEDs on the uh, on the regular cards were lit. None of the yellow LEDs were lit, so I knew that all the all the rails were good and none of them were overloaded. Uh, and I got to uh, digging around some more, and I just happened upon when I looked on the bottom, noticing that there was a fuse uh, at the um, on the uh, X uh, X Y Z uh, analog board down there on the bottom, and we'll look at that when we open this up. And I checked the fuse, and of course, it was blown. So I got to digging in the service manual, and the service manual that I had, the schematics that I had for this unit, uh, didn't look like what I was seeing in my spectrum analyzer. Uh, the, the XYZ board was different and the, um, uh, some of the other things were different about it too. So, uh, I, I pulled the board out and, and was taking a look and I got to digging around on the internet and I found out that, um, there's actually two, uh, different, uh, setups for this spectrum analyzer. There is an older, uh, looks like a re revision A version of the, um, XYZ board for this spectrum analyzer that uses um, an integrated circuit uh, for uh, the horizontal and vertical deflection circuits. And then and that board has a different um, power supply, a different setup configuration for the um, 
for the uh, uh, oscillator and the drive circuit for the high voltage transformer. Uh, it has a different, uh, complete, different setup altogether. Um, there's no crowbar. We'll take a look. I've got the um, manuals here. So this is what the uh, revision A uh, board looks like. It uh, has all of the components there on one board, uh, the flyback transformer here, uh, voltage trip, high voltage tripler, and the oscillator, transistor, and regulator circuit all here are all located on this one board, A69 board. And here is a uh, the schematic here of that setup. So this is for the revision A of the XYZ board, which is not the board that I have in my unit. The board that I have in my unit is this board right here, which is the revision C board. So it's a little bit different. Um, one major difference is that the uh, deflection amplifiers are all discrete. On the revision A, um, there's some integrated circuits doing some of the uh, deflection amplifier duties, and uh, the board looks different. So this is the board that I have with uh, these transistors here on heat sinks and the uh, high voltage uh, oscillator and regulator circuit, which are here, uh, is what I have my board on my uh, spectrum analyzer also. So I have uh, this setup here with the crowbar circuit and uh, the components located. So all of this is located on the A67. It's not located on the high voltage uh, power supply on the high voltage uh, board here. So I had to dig around to figure that out. And of course, here's a picture of what um, the board that I have in my spectrum man looks like. And that's a revision, uh, a Rev C. So an XYZ board Rev C not the uh, Rev A. So if you're doing a repair on your spectrum analyzer and you get the manuals out and you look at this and you see, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. Well, that's why. So there's different, uh, there's different board uh, layouts uh, that are used in this uh, instrument. Okay, we've got some documentation here. So we'll walk through um, what I figured out. So. You're looking at this paper, and if you're really astute, you've noticed that this isn't a schematic for the HP 3585B. This is a schematic uh, from a Tech 2465A slash 2467. And the reason that uh, I'm showing you this is because this, if you look at this highlighted portion here, which is the uh, high voltage regulator and oscillator portion for the... Um, CRT drive the here is highlighted uh, showing the um, the uh, oscillator drive coming in from the uh, from the negative 15 volt rail going in through the oscillator the high voltage oscillator here and then the uh, feedback portion coming from the uh, cathode uh, line uh, the high, the negative high voltage for the cathode coming back through some op amps and going back into uh, the high voltage oscillator where it controls the drive for the oscillator. And the reason I'm showing you that is because this circuit here is almost identical to the HP 3585B, which I have here. Now it's a little bit smaller, but uh, we have the almost identical circuit here. We've got our uh, oscillator, high voltage oscillator transistor here. Uh, in, in this case, it's coming off of the positive 18-volt uh, rail. Uh, and then it goes through uh, the, the primary windings of the high-voltage flyback transformer. And it gets a feedback off of the uh, negative 3900-volt uh, rail, which is the cathode supply for the CRT, uh, coming back through to an op-amp here. And then being fed back to the base of the oscillator uh, drive transistor here. So it's essentially the same uh, circuit. And the reason that I showed you the tech circuit is because the, the tech uh, service manual does a really good job with explaining in detail how this works. And so 
when I first started looking into the repairs, I looked, of course, at the HP manual. The HP manual doesn't go into um, a whole lot of detail about uh, how this circuit works. And I wasn't very familiar with this type of setup because I've never worked on this before. Uh, so I needed to do a little research to understand how the circuit worked better. And I'm going to explain how it works. And actually, it's pretty simple how it works. Um, what this is, and I'll use the HP drawings here but uh what this how this works is um there's an oscillate there is a initial oscillation that's set up uh by this transistor here so when the power is first applied uh, the uh there's uh some current that flows through uh the windings of this trend of this uh, transformer here that set up an initial field on this transformer. And of course that uh, initial field creates uh, voltage on the secondary side, which is then uh, fed back into the control op amp here. And what happens is, is that initial power on pulse sets up an oscillation in this transformer. And then that oscillation then decays away uh, because of the, um, the as the, the magnetic field on the transformer uh, continues to expand and expand and then as it starts to contract um, that causes a uh, collapse of the magnetic field there which causes the voltage to drop back down and then that's where uh, the op amp here uh, starts to kick in as it senses that this voltage is going away it's going to provide more drive to this transistor to get that field going again and i believe um I don't know the exact frequency. I think this maybe os op oscillates somewhere around 20 to 30 kilohertz. Somewhere in there is the frequency. And that frequency is determined by the uh, mag magnetic properties of this transformer here. Um, so it's really a fixed frequency um, set up by this transformer. And the way that the uh, high voltage regulation portion works is, as mentioned before, it's it's going to sample the output of the secondary side of the flyback transformer here. So in this case on the uh, 4 kV line, which goes to the C, uh, the CRT cathode. Uh, and it's gonna, it takes a, a sense off of this uh, network right here. There's a voltage divider network made up of a, a 30 mega ohm resistor and a 200 kilo ohm resistor. That is fed back to the op amp at this point here. And this is what is called, uh, referred to as the summing node. Uh, and the way, reason there's a summing node here is this is two voltages coming in. So there's a reference voltage set up here by this uh, transistor uh, Zener regulator circuit here, and then a high voltage adjust, which sets the uh, voltage at this point here that is provided as a reference voltage. And then the voltage sensed here uh, also goes into this, and both of these voltages here are summed in this uh, capacitor C20 right here. And as the uh, charge on this capacitor, uh, if the charge here starts to uh, lower down, uh, meaning that uh, that uh, this uh, voltage is becoming uh, smaller here, which would mean that the, the voltage here, uh, the voltage at the output here is uh, lowering, then uh, this op amp will drive uh, the transistor uh, here through the through these windings, it will drive the the, os the oscillator transistor to Q1 more and cause more conduction on uh, the the uh, this um, main winding here for the primary of the flyback transformer. And as voltage uh, rises at the sense point, uh, this capacitor uh, charges up and it begins to uh, send current into or uh, begins to uh, cause the uh, the value on uh, this port this uh, the non-inverting uh, pin of the op amp to the value to rise and then the op amp output uh, drops back down and it reduces the drive to the oscillator and that's how this circuit sort of works here and so when I first got to looking into uh, this uh, circuit on my uh, spectrum analyzer, I took voltage readings because, um, you know, that's one of the first things you do when you're troubleshooting is you check voltages. Uh, all the voltages were good. What I did know was that this, this fuse here was blowing. So this is a one amp fuse. 
that feeds the primary of the flyback transformer. And we'll, so we'll take a look at what the troubleshooting manual says to do for the blown fuse. All right, so this is out of the HP service manual. This is service group uh, D4. And we're looking at the high voltage oscillator A67. Uh, so first thing we do is you check the 18 volt supply and fuse F1. Uh, if it is open, then we check to see if Q35 or C27 are shorted. And those components are here. Uh, Q35 is a triac, or a, I'm sorry, as an SCR. And C, uh, CR27 is the, um, is this uh, Zener diode here. And what this is, is a crowbar circuit. So that if voltage uh, gets uh, too high here, uh, it will activate this uh, SCR and turn on, turn the SCR on and it will trip to uh, protect the uh, tr flyback transformer from an over voltage condition. And it blows this fuse here and then you lose um, all of your uh, high voltage for your CRT. Well, I checked these components and of course they, uh, they were fine. Uh, this SCR is, is fine and this uh, CR27 is not shorted. So that would have been the easy fix. Uh, but uh, they, they were good. So the next thing that the manual tells you to do is uh, replace the fuse. I did not replace the fuse uh, because what was happening is as soon as I replaced the fuse, it would blow again. So is U2 at pin 6 uh, greater than or equal to 7 volts DC? So that is the output of the transistor, or the output of the um, uh, control op amp that goes to the oscillator transistor. So the output here was high. It was about a positive 12.7 uh, volts, uh, which, uh, according to the manual, uh, is, is greater than or equal to 7 volts DC. Uh, so I checked Q13. And Q13, uh, of course, was good, too. So Q13 is the oscillator transistor um, right here. That transistor was good. So all of my easy fixes now have been ruled out. Uh, if Q13 is good, replace the A65 board. So the A65 board is the board that uh, is under that uh, metallic cover there. That's the high voltage board. And the, the manual talks about the A65 board. It says that uh, troubleshooting is difficult on the A65 board and it recommends to replace A65 as a whole unit. So this is a picture of the A65 board uh, with the, uh, the flyback transformer and then the various components that are under that cover. And we'll look at those in the spectrum analyzer later. So that's where we are with um, this, uh, this spectrum analyzer. So I know that my fault is on the A65 board. And uh, based on additional uh, troubleshooting I've done to the board, I've determined that uh, I have an open uh, in the winding between the, uh, there's a three kilovolt tap here and a four kilovolt tap here. And I've determined that I have an open between these taps. Uh, and that was basically just taking a resistance reading. I think from uh, the ground tap to this first tap was about uh, 24 ohms. Uh, from the ground tap to the 3 kilovolt tap was about 209 ohms. And then from the ground tap to the 4 kilovolt tap was about 900 kilo ohms, so 900,000 ohms, uh, which is a large difference. You know, I would expect a rather a large resistance reading for a transformer uh, because these are high voltage windings. So they're going to be uh, much more, uh, there's going to be much more copper uh, in these windings than there would be on, say, the primary windings here. So I would expect a high resistance, but I wouldn't expect to be 900 kilo, uh, 900,000 ohms when the next tap down, 1,000 volts down, is reading 209 ohms to ground. So that is where I suspect the problem is going to be. I've got to open in this winding and possibly shorts uh, in the winding there. And the way that we can determine that is we'll do a uh, ring test on the transformer. And I've never done that, but I read about how it's done on the internet. And I think that we have, uh, with my test equipment, we can set up and do a ring test on this transformer and see if we do, in fact, have shorter right, I've got the, um, this is the parts unit that we've got set up here. Uh, as you can see here, we've still got all the 
stuff we looked at earlier. And I've taken the cover off of the high voltage uh, board here. So this is our flyback transformer. And it's got a voltage value written on here. And when you set up, uh, when you replace this uh, A65 uh, assembly here, you're supposed to make some adjustments on the uh, XYZ board, which is under here. Uh, and you're supposed to set um, that high voltage adjust pot to read uh, this value here, measuring from uh, test point one, which is on this board somewhere. I'll have to look at it on the manual. But there's a test point here where you test the uh, cathode voltage uh, for that value and you adjust the potentiometer on this board here to set it to this value uh, plus or minus I think 10 volts or so. I'll we'll have to do that in the um, in the good spectrum analyzer once we get this uh, transformer out. But let's go ahead and take a resistance. So I've got this on set to resistance. So let's go ahead and see if the fuse, so this is right here, our fuse uh, F1 for the high voltage oscillator. So let's check and see if that fuse is good because that'll uh, give us a good indication right there that, uh, and the fuse is good. So that's good. That means that um, at least uh, this hasn't happened to uh, this unit. I would, uh, uh, some good confidence anyway, that, uh, that at least this fuse hasn't been blowing for that reason. So in order to get this out, there's a plastic cover here that comes off, and then there's two uh, thumb screws that come off to take the cover off. And what we'll need to do is disconnect the these plugs here. So this one and um, this one here, which has a uh, little clip on it to the, uh, what is that? That's the focus uh, adjustment there. And then we've got the power to the, uh, the um, high voltage. Uh, this goes to the uh, CRT uh, anode, and it's a word of caution, um, you know, just like I talked about in my uh, previous video with the Tech uh, 1720, uh, all of this stuff is really high voltage. We've already discussed the fact that this is uh, almost 4,000 volts here. At this point here, uh, this is comes off of a tripler network, off of the three um, kilovolt tap, so I think this is somewhere around uh, 9,000 volts, I think is where this is. I have to look and see. Um, but anyway, this is really high voltage here. And uh, the 4,000 volts, uh, the 3,000 volts off the tap of this transformer, and then there's a 300 volt supply in here somewhere too. So all this stuff here, if you're gonna work on any of this, you wanna make sure you take uh, really good precautions. Now this analyzer has been unplugged and off for long enough that I know that these things are discharged. Uh, this in particular will hold a charge for uh, a pretty good while. So if you're doing some troubleshooting where you're turning the unit on and off, you wanna make sure that you know how to properly uh, discharge this to ground. And what the manual says to do for this is to unplug this connection here and then take this and touch it to the chassis uh, for 30 seconds is what the manual says, something like that. But anyway, just to make sure that this is discharged to uh, anything. But anyway, so that comes unplugged. And there's one more connection, which is on the CRT, which is right here. It goes to this. So we'll turn this around and we'll unplug the uh, CRT connection. Which is uh, right in here. So this will have to be unplugged. All right, so this is the uh, CRT connection here, and there's a cable tie that you have to cut to get the uh, wiring harness loose, and then you can uh, sort of work this back and forth and get it loose. Now, I want to be uh, particularly careful with this because now that I have a parts unit, I don't want to damage anything, including uh, the CRT, which one day may be uh, needed to uh, replace the other CRT there. So I'll have this uh, now as a spare CRT. So one bonus to uh, buying a parts unit for something is you have lots of parts. All right, so we're gonna feed this back uh, through the backside and we'll take out the uh, high voltage uh, power supply here. 
and we'll do that by uh, taking these screws uh, here and then we'll feed the socket and assembly back out through this um, opening right here. There's one more thing I noted too while I was uh, disconnecting the CRT is the screws for this XY board are missing. So someone's had this board out at some point too. So something interesting to note there, a little about the history of this, uh, this parts donor. So here's our um, replacement A65 assembly. It's out now. And we can look and see that, uh, you know, everything looks like it's in pretty good shape for this. Um, nothing looks like it's damaged. And one thing we can do is take uh, resistance of the windings here. So we'll do that and see what the resistance value is for uh, the various windings here. And we can compare that to what we know uh, from the resistances I took on the bad um, transformer. All right, so the first thing we can check is the uh, primary side of the transformer. And I know from uh, just tracing the, the leads back that uh, this first winding uh, right here, uh, which goes to the base of transistor Q13, is the blue and the yellow leads. And then the uh, primary winding here is green and orange. And those are color codes for this connector right here. So the green and orange wires are the primary and the blue and uh, the yellow and the blue are the uh, transistor base drive. So we can check those windings first. And since now this is disconnected, uh, we can just take the resistance readings here and we see that uh, on the blue and yellow, we're reading a very uh, low value of resistance, which I would expect. And the primary wind of the transformer here, the orange and green should also be a very low value which is what we see there on the multimeter. So nothing uh, too uh, unexpected there. All we know we don't have any open windings. All right, so now we can check uh, the resistance of the secondary side of the transformer. And we're going, I'm gonna check uh, from pin nine, which is ground, and that is the uh, black wire. So if you look at the traces, um, you can follow the tra the um, the traces back on this board and I know that this black wire right here is tied connected to the ground of our uh, of the secondary side of the high voltage transformer and that black wire is this not this big one right here this goes to the focus adjustment but this uh, smaller uh, wire right here which goes back to this connector so I'll take my, hook my um, my multimeter in to that lead and the first one we'll check is the uh, 300 volt winding which is off of resistor um, R3 which is a 390 kilo ohm resistor which is this resistor down here at the bottom and I believe this one should be about uh, 24 ohms and there it is so that's our 300 volt winding now we can check the next uh, winding here is the uh, three kilovolt tap, and we will uh, check that by looking at. Uh, I think we have to check that off of the uh, transformer, and that tap is uh, located under here, and that goes to the high voltage, uh, the high voltage uh, tripler circuit, which is a. Um, there's another module. Uh, you can't see, but there's a module under this board. I think it's located right about here, and that's the high voltage tripler. Okay, so as you can see here is our uh, tripler, our high voltage tripler circuit here, and then this lead just comes unplugged from the transformer. So this is our uh, right here, uh, this pin right here, which connects to the uh, tripler, is our three uh, kilovolt winding. And I'm going to go ahead and unplug this also. 
just so we can now set that out of the way. And we can also check the tripler to make sure there's not any uh, shorts on the tripler. All right, so we're gonna go uh, to ground again and we'll take the resistance here. And all right, so 232 ohms. So that's about uh, what I was getting. Maybe it was 229 was what I measured. Um, but anyway, so that's uh, good. That's what we'd expect. Now our last one, and this is where the fault was on mine, is gonna be off of the uh, four kilovolt tap. And that's the tap here uh, for the uh, high voltage diode uh, right here, the CR1, that's this high voltage diode right here that connects to the board. So we'll have to take that reading uh, right there on the transformer itself. And this transformer is coated with um, uh, insulating material. It's a, a soft kind of a clear silicone type material. So if you want to take this reading, you have to um, make sure you puncture that insulation. And there we go. So we can see right now that uh, this is the winding uh, from ground, the, the full winding of the secondary transformer and it's 329, uh, 330 ohms. So much less than the 900,000 ohms that I was reading on my transformer. So that's good. That's uh, some confirmation there that uh, this should be the problem. All right, we'll write those down. And then while we're out here, we'll go ahead and check the filament windings. So that's these two uh, windings right here. And I'm gonna take them from the front of the board since the um, insulating material is not here. We can check uh, these two points here. I expect this to be a low value resistance, uh, which is what we see there, uh, 0.1 ohms. So that, that's the filament. I think it's a, a six volt filament, so it's not going to be uh, very high resistance at all here. All right, so that's good. So we've got uh, good information here, and I think this module will work good. What we'll do is we'll have to put this uh, back together, and I'm going to just replace the whole assembly. I thought about... Um, uh, just swapping out the transformers, but uh, I really don't see uh, the benefit there of the added work. Um, it will be better just to replace this as a whole module. And then we'll take the old one out and we can test the old one and see uh, see what we get. And we can confirm that uh, that one in fact does have an open winding on the secondary. All right, one more thing we can check uh, before we put all this back together is we'll check to make sure that the um, tripler uh, module, which is right here, doesn't uh, show any shorts. Uh, if you look at, um, uh, there's not a um, schematic of this in the uh, manual. It's just simply shown as a box. Um, but essentially what is inside here is some high voltage diodes and some capacitors that basically make a voltage uh, tripler circuit. And all I'm gonna check is to make sure that we don't have any short circuits between any of the three leads. We know that um, that we shouldn't see a direct short across any of these leads. And if we do, then we'll know that uh, something about this trip is not, not gonna work right. So that's what we're looking for here in uh, this circuit here is just indications of shorts. And we'll check that uh, from the input to uh, the ground lead there. And we see that uh, we have we have a high resistance connection there. And uh, we can check also from uh, the input or the, uh, the output portion here, which I'll have to uh, see if I can get like a screwdriver down in there into uh, the tip there. And then we'll check uh, uh, voltage uh, resistances here. And that looks good. And also to ground so that looks good as well. Uh, so I think all of the uh, all of those points look good. So I don't expect that the, uh, the tripler uh, looks like it's going to work fine. So we'll put all this back together, and then we'll open up the um, the good spectrum analyzer, and we'll look at what we need to do to swap these modules out. Now we've got our uh, A6, A65 all put together. One more thing we can check is we'll go ahead and check to make sure that um, there's not a short across uh, this high voltage diode. Now these diodes, uh, these high voltage diodes have a, um, a much larger forward uh, voltage, forward conduction voltage. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to do a diode test and you won't be able to diode test uh, these type diodes with a standard diode tester. 
But what we can do is just do a resistance check and that would at least eliminate uh, if there's a short uh, on this diode. And the way we'll do that is just take a resistance reading here from the cathode uh, to the, uh, the anode to the cathode. Again, having to make sure we get under that uh, insulating material and make uh, some good contact with our uh, terminal there. And it looks like that is not shorted. Now what we can do uh, with the diode check is test these uh, low voltage diodes that are in this uh, module here. Uh, we can make sure that uh, none of these diodes are shorted and they should all check fine with a uh, normal uh, diode check. Uh, so there's a couple of uh, diodes down in here that uh, we can check and those will all look like they test fine. Uh, we can also check some of these resistors in here uh, because of the, just the way this circuit is laid out. Uh, there's a lot of uh, very high um, impedance paths. So we should be able to check a lot of these resistors just uh, as they are in circuit mounted. Uh, like this is a, a 200 a kilo, kilo ohm resistor here. That one's reading good. Uh, we can check uh, this 390 kilo ohm resistor there again, uh, so 407, so that's, that's pretty good. Uh, a couple more we can do, but uh, you know, you get the idea that we can check these uh, resistors here. Just looking for anything that looks like it might uh, be any indication that maybe some other problem. And I don't uh, suspect it will, but I'll check uh, the values here off camera and then uh, we'll get this module put into the spectrum analyzer. All right, here we are. Now we've got the um, my good spectrum analyzer uh, flipped up and open up. And as you can see here, the cover has already been taken off. And uh, you may have seen that laying off in the background on some of the other videos. But I know that, um, you know, I've been using this analyzer, uh, the spectrum analyzer, uh, for a little bit uh, with, the, um, with the dead CRT. But as you can see here that... Uh, I left the fuse removed, so I know that this hasn't been powered up for uh, quite a while. It's had sufficient time to discharge there. So what we're going to do is we will, uh, the same thing, I'll have to get in to the uh, front and disconnect the CRT and then remove this module out and we'll put the new module in. Now we note here that our transform voltages are a little bit different, so this is a negative uh, 3895 volts DC and the uh, replacement module is going to be a negative 39 point, uh, 3917 volts so um, uh, it was a little bit different so what is that uh, 22 uh, volts uh, difference so we'll have to make an adjustment and that adjustment here again is going to be down on the A uh, down here on the A67 board and I think the potentiometer uh, for that adjustment is uh, right there is the potentiometer. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to get in there and do that. I know uh, in the manual, what you do is you put this board on an extender board and it sticks out on the top side and then you can make the adjustment there. I don't have that extender board uh, and I don't want to uh, have to pay uh, a lot of money to buy one. So I'm just going to see uh, what I can do there as far as getting in and making the adjustment. Uh, maybe possibly uh, putting the cover on this and pulling it out because it looks like that uh, it may clear, make some clearance there, enough clearance where I can get in there and make an adjustment. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, next, first thing first, we'll take this module out and swap out to or the uh, good module. All right, so we got the camera on the tripod and let's see uh, what we get here. our display that looks very good now uh, that looks pretty good uh, let's see get some uh, focus control get uh, intensity control there uh, yeah so that looks good it looks real good so uh, one thing we'll need to do now is we'll need to check the voltage uh, reading on the uh, adjustment there. I'm going to get the manual out and we'll take a look at what uh, 
that says to do, how that says to take that reading. There's a um, section in here in the manual for CRT control and high voltage power supply adjustments uh, where it tells you, like I said, to put the um, A67 on extender cord and I'm not going to be able to do that uh, because I don't have the extender card. But I know that I have checked uh, the voltages here uh, for the uh, 100 volt regulator and that's good and the high voltage adjustment here. So I'm gonna take that reading. And the way we do that is you connect a, um, a probe, on, and it talks about it, uh, let's see, right here, uh, is a high voltage probe on the uh, A65 TP1. Right, there is a um, gold, uh, you can see it right back in there, there's a gold uh, plated through hole ring right there and that is uh, TP1. So uh, you can see it's behind the filament leads there, that uh, TP1. So you'll need to hook a uh, voltage divider probe up to there. So adjust the uh, potentiometer there on the A67 board for the voltage reading on this transformer, uh, plus or minus 10 volts. So I'm gonna do that, uh, and I'm gonna turn this off first uh, before I do that and I've gone ahead and made the adjustment so as you can see uh, here is my uh, setup that I'm using here uh, I've just got the uh, I'm taking the reading off of I didn't use the TP1 what I ended up using instead was a uh, component connection on the a65 board uh, I used um, so TP1 is right here and I just clipped it to uh, the resistor, uh, this uh, 30 mega ohm resistor right here, which is essentially the same point electrically, and then uh, the negative lead to the uh, ground end of R17. And I've got it going through a uh, high voltage divider right there. It's a 1000 uh, to one divider. Um, so looking at negative uh, uh, 3.917 uh, volts, and which would equate to a negative uh, 39 17 volts uh, after you divide it by a thousand so there we go now it's adjusted and the crt looks like it's uh, working just fine uh this is really a uh, uh very uh, kind of um haphazard way to make the adjustments but uh, like i said without a extender card uh is really the only way i could get in there and reach that uh, the trim pot that you need to reach which is down uh, in there on the uh, circuit board there that trim pot is where you need to make the adjustment so uh, if you're going to do this uh, you need to uh, figure out the best way to do it uh, safely and just know that uh, this is a lot of uh, high voltage in here i'm going to and of course don't uh, hook any of this up i had all the instrument power down uh, before i hooked this up uh, this test equipment up and i'm going to turn it off uh, and let it uh, make sure I get uh, it discharged there on the meter before uh, I go and uh, disconnect any of this stuff here. So I've got the old um, A65 uh, board out now. And let's take the resistance readings on uh, this transformer here uh, so we can compare them to uh, what we measured earlier, which was the good transformer. So we'll take a look at the... Um, primary side first we'll go we'll go from the blue uh, lead and the yellow lead and this one should read a low resistance there uh, which is the same as the other one red it was a 0.1 resistance 0.10 ohm resistance and then we'll go from the orange and green should also read a low resistance value so 0.1 ohms so that's the same let's take a look at the secondary side now so again i'm going to go from the uh, black lead because that's the uh, that's the common or the ground lead on the uh, secondary side and the first thing we'll do is we'll take the resistance reading from uh, the same point here which is this uh, 390 uh, mega ohm or 390 kilo ohm resistor here and this was about 24 ohms so there we go again about 24 ohms all right, and the next point was the uh, 3 kV tap for the tripler uh, connection. That's on the back of the board here. And this one was 229 ohms. So we expect to see, okay, there's so 331, 332 ohms. So that's pretty close. 
Now, uh, the last uh, reading here on this secondary side was the uh, 4KV tap, and that's the one that on the good board read about 330 ohms, and this board is gonna read much higher um, because this is the faulty one. So get my probe in there on the insulation, and we see there that uh, this reading is 815,000 ohms, and it's uh, continuing to go up. So it's not uh, definitely not a um, definitely not a 330 ohms like the good transformer. So that seems to be the problem right there. And uh, just for uh, completeness sake, we'll look at the uh, filament windings, and that should read a low value of uh, 0.1 ohms, so that's expected. All right, so this we know that this transformer has a problem uh, between the uh, 3kV and the 4kV taps. So now what we'll do is I'm gonna see if I can set up a uh, ring test uh, for this transformer, and I'll get, uh, I'll see if I can find a, um, I don't have another uh, transformer like this, a flyback transformer, but uh, I'll see if I can find maybe an old switch mode power supply transformer uh, and we'll do a ring test on that to see what a uh, what a good ring test should look like and then we'll look at what the ring test on this transformer shows uh, to see if we have any shorts in uh, on the secondary of this transformer. Okay so here's what we have set up here. Um, I've got a uh, Tektronix uh, flyback transformer that came out of a piece of uh, defunct tech equipment and I'm going to use this as an example of what a, uh, a proper um, test should look like for doing a uh, transformer ring test. Now uh, I don't, I'm not an expert on this, this is a fairly new concept uh, for me that I'm trying out here so I'm kind of learning as I go uh, but I thought this would be interesting because we're going to try to do this test on the bad uh, transformer from the HP and see if it has any shorted windings. Now I also know that there is dedicated test equipment that you can do that you can use to perform this test. Um, I know one piece in particular is the uh, blue ring tester from Anatech. He's the one who makes the uh, blue ESR meter. Uh, I know all about that already. I actually have ordered a kit. It hasn't arrived yet but um the test is, is fairly simple uh, to do with just some test equipment, so that's what I'm going to do here. And we'll look at the results on the uh, scope. I'll, sh I'll put the camera on the scope here, but I'm going to explain my setup here. So what I've got is I've got a, um, a pulse coming in from my, uh, from my uh, waveform generator, which is up here on the bench. You can't see it. And... It's set up to do a single uh, sine wave uh, burst, a, a, one single cycle of a 20 kilohertz sine wave at three volts peak to peak. And I've got it wired into the primary side of this transformer on one of the primary windings here across a, uh, a 100 nanofarad uh, ceramic capacitor. And then I've got the uh, oscilloscope ground and the signal generator ground here are connected together on one side and on the other side I've got a lead going this is the um, oscilloscope probe going through a, a 22 kilo ohm resistor off of the um, off of the what will be I guess the, the hot signal side of this connection here and I'm gonna have the scope set up to uh, trigger on a single pulse and we'll put the camera over here now. So that's what you're looking at there. And now I'm gonna pulse this uh, signal generator here. And there is our ring test. So what we're looking at here is we have our an initial pulse that was applied to the uh, transformer. And it's what happens is, is that transformer is going to, um, it, it's gonna resonate. And, it, and that's what this is, these, these ringing, uh, and that's why this is called a ring test, because it looks sort of like the ring, like the, sound, like the sound wave that maybe when you ring a bell might make, where you have this initial pulse, and then you have this slowly 
uh, decaying pulse train that follows along. And what the ring uh, test is looking for is that we should have this ringing pattern here. And uh, these, these, the automatic ring testers, like the one I mentioned a minute ago, uh, the way they work is they essentially uh, will pulse uh, your transformer there. And then there's a circuit that, that, that counts the number of rings that might meet a threshold. So if the, the detector threshold maybe is here, uh, so it would count for one, two, three, uh, maybe four uh, counts. And it's set up to display uh, essentially a go, no go uh, output signal if it gets some minimum number of counts. And if it doesn't count uh, the minimum number, then it would fail the ring test and you would know that uh, that uh, you might have a, a, a problem with your transformer. Now, the idea here is that uh, a, a good transformer with no uh, shorted ring, with no shorts uh, in the windings, uh, should ha should display uh, this ringing pattern when it's when it's excited, uh, like we did a minute ago. If your transformer has uh, shorts in the winding, then the, um, the the Q of that transformer is going to be substantially reduced, and uh, because of that, you're not going to have this ringing. Uh, what you'll see is uh, just maybe one or two. Uh, pulses and that might be all so uh, it's going to significantly affect your ring pattern and if we have shorts like I said you're not going to get this you may just get one or, or no uh, ringing at all and that would be an indication that um, that you that you that you would have uh, shorts in those windings what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, remove the old HP flyback transformer I have to desolder it from the uh, board and we're gonna hook it up to this similar setup and we'll see if we can get a pattern that looks like this on the, um, the HP flyback. We've got the, um, this is the HP uh, flyback transformer now. It's been taken off the board and similar setup here. Uh, we're set up across the primary with the, um, the signal generator up there set to go on a single burst of a 20 kilohertz sine wave at three volts peak to peak. And I need me to reset the scope here. All right, let's uh, go ahead and give this a, a try here. So we're gonna trigger the uh, pulse for this uh, HP flyback transformer and nothing on the scope. I'm going to uh, raise the output level and keep triggering until we get something uh, let's see. There we go. Okay, so I had to raise the output to 6 volts peak to peak, and that's what we got there on our uh, ring test. So, we, you know, we see that, you know, we're still at the same uh, 100 millivolts per division and 100 microseconds. So, same setup that we had uh, before, but uh, this time we were unable to uh, get any ringing on the transformer until we got it up to uh, six volts uh, peak to peak and you see that uh, what we have here is, is almost not really not even a ring at all I'm going to reduce the uh, I'm going to reduce the uh, the volts per division and we'll do it again so we have a more indi uh, better indication here all right there we go so and let's spread this out a little bit there. And all right, here we go. So we see that uh, we had our initial pulse and a little bit and decayed away quite a bit. And then just um, a little bit of um, some, uh, maybe, maybe some ringing right here. But uh, we can see here that it clearly uh, did, did not display that, that ring pattern that we had on the good transformer. So, uh, based on the fact that we couldn't get anything to occur at uh, on the previous setup that we had uh, here uh, at uh, 3 volts, which is this one right here, and that we had to raise it all the way up to 6 volts to get any response, uh, it tells me, that, and the, you know, we see the pattern on the scope here, it tells me that there's more than likely shorts uh, on the secondary side of this high voltage transformer. Now the uh, the the um, the ring tester uh, instruments that I, I mentioned earlier, uh, they don't they use a much uh, smaller uh, 
pulse size. I think it's somewhere around 600 millivolts peak uh, pulse on the uh, on the tester. So much lower than what we're doing. But then, then again, those are designed for testing in circuit, and, whereas this one uh, got it out of circuit. So I doubt that um, that tester would be able to see any ringing on this transformer at 600 millivolts. Seeing as how I'm having to pulse this at six volts peak to peak to get uh, any indication at all on the oscilloscope there. And like I said, again, comparing it to what we saw on a uh, what we uh, suspect is probably a good flyback transformer, it's uh, pretty obvious to see that there's definitely some uh, shorts on the secondary side of this high voltage transformer. Now, uh, these tests are not just limited to um, high frequency type transformers like these. Uh, the, you know, you can you can ring test any uh, any kind of transformers, uh, regular power line transformers, 60 hertz, 50 hertz, or um, uh, sw switch mode power supply transformers, flyback transformers, things like that. Um, also, uh, in, in inductors, any kind. Of, it's an it's an inductive component test. So any kind of um, component that's a you know a, a wound inductor type setup uh, can be can be tested like this. Um, but uh, like like I said, it's it's really uh, useful for um, you know testing these types of uh, devices, these transformers and things, because uh, chances are when they fail and like this one did, uh, there's probably um, shorts in the windings. And um, what happens, and in this case, is those shorts cause the um, primary side to draw an excessive amount of current uh, for the secondary side, and then of course it it blows the uh, the protective fuse, which is what we saw in my spectrum analyzer that uh, pr primary side fuse was blowing. And again, just due to the excessive current being drawn on the secondary side by those shorted windings. And here we are. So bottom panels put back on now and it looks like um, after we adjusted the, um, the uh, negative uh, uh, cathode voltage there, uh, it looks like it's brought the, the scale back on, so this is right down at the uh, bottom graticule now, and up here at the top. So I'm going to take a look at the manual and see there is a um, section in the uh, service manual dedicated to screen, to the screen uh, positioning with measurements as far as where the measurements that should be on the um, screens. I'm going to take a look at that but uh, I'm not gonna put that on this video because that would be uh, not really too interesting, just really adjustments to the, uh, the positions here on the display. But uh, that is all for this video. Uh, so success, we got um, the high voltage module replaced in this uh, HP 3585B spectrum analyzer. And I've got a uh, 80 pound uh, parts unit now that I've gotta find room for in the closet. So anyway, but that should be good. Uh, that way, uh, you know, if I have any more problems with this unit, I'll have a source of parts to go for, uh, to go to. So uh, that uh, hopefully will uh, pay for itself. Just the uh, getting this uh, CRT back and running uh, in itself was uh, worth the price of the placement parts. So. That is all for this video. Uh, stay tuned to the channel. I've got some more videos coming up, uh, some more repair videos that I've got uh, in the works, and of course my long-term project when that is complete. Uh, we'll do a, uh, I'll do a um, show and tell video on that. But uh, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Well, it looks like I was uh, not wrong um, on the. Uh, you can see here, this is the power supply section of my working spectrum analyzer, and one board is not populated. Uh, and we look here at the uh, parts unit, and we see that this board is populated. So this one has uh, an extra board in the power supply section. So that's interesting.